going to do the tip of the ocean. There is a um, three four one formation that we're going to be using in this upcoming treatment, and this is a formation to be used with our ten and eleven year olds in a youth league that only has nine players on each side. Um, and so this is for a lot of kids uh, on our team. This is the first time they're playing with this many players on the field. They've moved up from a league that was seven on seven. So now it's nine on nine. We've got a bigger field. We've got some newer positions. And so I thought it would be helpful to go over what is expected from those positions so they can understand what I'm talking about and maybe have some more confidence of knowing where to be on the field. And so uh, the first thing to mention is why are we using this formation? Well, first of all, we always want to find a formation that's got a good balance between defending and attacking. Uh, and um, one of the, the things that I have noticed watching kids these age, uh, this age that a lot of games seem to follow a similar pattern. That after the game begins and, and things start to get a little bit stretched out and the attackers come up the field, their attackers will get up the field trying to attack, trying to score on a goal here to the right. They lose the ball and there is a huge space in between the defenders and the midfielders. Defenders often maybe stay a little bit too deep. Midfielders get um, focused on attacking and uh, overlook the need to drop back and defend. So one of the reasons we're doing this formation where there's four midfielders, we're not doing uh, what might be thought of as a, a flat four. Our four midfielders are not in a row, uh, which is a common uh, a common setup when you're playing eleven on eleven. You might have four defend or four midfielders in a row. What we are doing with our four midfielders is we are creating a diamond, uh, and as you're sort of looking up the field vertically, uh, we've got the top of the diamond with the attacking midfielder here. We've got the bottom of the diamond, the defensive midfielder there, and the left and right midfielders. And so this diamond shape uh, can be helpful in understanding where you're supposed to be in midfield, and it helps create some balance because we have a defensive midfielder who, uh, as the name suggests, has primary responsibilities for defending. And all of these positions are very important on the field. But probably because we only have nine players and because of the tendency of players of this age to sort of get lost a little bit in, in where they are on the field, the defensive midfielder position is probably going to be just about the most important in terms of ensuring that the team keeps a good shape. And so there's going to be a big difference between attacking and losing the ball with players in this position and attacking and losing the ball with a defensive midfielder who is positioned to win the ball back and then redistribute to the players further up the field. So uh, let me maybe move through this. Uh, one by one with these positions. Obviously, we have uh, in the back, we've got the goalie. And the goalie is typically going to stay in the 18. Uh, and uh, maybe on rare occasions would come out to get the ball, but the goalie is normally going to stay, stay pretty close to the goal, stay close to home. Next, we've got three defenders, a central defender, a left, and a right. And uh, as the name suggests, they're going to be focusing on defending. That's their, their primary job. This league has offsides. And so 
one of the things that we can focus on is not only defending well individually in one-on-one -on -one situations, but thinking about positioning. So if we're attacking up the field, our defenders wouldn't really need to be back in this position as they're shown. They would need to push much farther up the field. And if we've got the ball in the opposing 18, I would expect that our defenders are going to come real far up the field uh, and, and probably up to uh, probably up to half field um, as well, because what we're doing is we're compressing the field so that their attackers have to drop back further. So the, the central defender in particular is going to have to think about where are we on the field? Where's the ball? Do I need to tell my outside defenders to move up or do we need to start dropping back? Uh, I've already touched some on the defensive midfielder, um, but you know this player is going to have to cover a lot of ground, do a lot of defensive work, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to contribute to attacks whatsoever. It just means we need to be smart about committing a lot of people forward um, all at once. And, you know, one of the things that these 10 and 11 year olds, uh, something that's going to help them in the future is as you get older, positions become more fluid. There's a lot more flexibility. But at this age, if they can learn sort of rigid positions as a starting point, that gives them a great foundation when they're older to then understand how do you swap positions with other players? How do you overlap? When do I drop back to cover for somebody? So we're with the starting point of having maybe a more rigid uh, positional requirements of you're going to stay in your position, uh, at their age, that will give them a foundation to then grow and learn. Well, when do I depart from that? When do I go out of position in order to create an advantage on the field. Um, and if you don't know your home position or where you're starting, then you're not going to have that knowledge of how to, how to um, apply and how to take, it, take um, advantage of openings you see in the other team. So the outside midfielders, left and right midfielders, they're the sides of the diamond. Uh, they're going to be doing a lot of getting up and down the field and contributing both to attack and both to defense. Now they are not left and right wingers. They aren't going to stay high up the field at all times, calling for the ball, looking for a pass um, without dropping back. When we lose possession, the midfielders have got to work back, get in between their man and the goal, getting goal side, um, to defend, win the ball, and then help start the attack again. And so this position is going to require a lot of stamina. It's likely a position that's going to get substitutal, substituted uh, fresh players in and out a lot. So it's very important that, that when the players are in these positions, that they, they use their energy. They, they run and, um, and use all the space in these bigger fields to get wide and cross it back in. You know, a team that's bunched up in the middle like this is going to be pretty easy to defend against. Uh, the other, the defense can stay compact and be hard to uh, hard to break through them. Using the width of the field to your advantage, going around instead of trying to like a battering ram go through a closed door is usually much more effective. Uh, and so our two primary attacking players are the forward and the attacking midfielder. Now the attacking midfielder is the top of the diamond. And so uh, they are going to be staying certainly in front of the defensive midfielder. They're at the top of the diamond, but that doesn't mean they stay in the center of the field at all times depending on where the ball is and where the opposition is, 
they're going to be moving left and right, looking for openings. Uh, same thing with the forward. Even though we're thinking about a, a position where we've got four midfielders and a forward, the attacking midfielder and the forward are not going to be staying within five feet of each other, right on top of each other. Moving, finding openings is going to be very important. Um, there may be occasions in which they're both on the same side of the field, but again, you want to look for open space, look for open passing lanes. And if the attacking midfielder has the ball in this area, it really doesn't do a whole lot of good for the forward to be so close uh, to him. The forward's probably going to want to move out here to maybe make a run this direction, possibly making a run over here. Uh, and in general, one of the things that, that needs to be understood is when your teammate has the ball, Getting right in their face doesn't do them a lot of good. Doesn't give them a whole lot of options. So uh, the forward, obviously, the forward's main responsibility is to get down the field and to score goals. That means the forward does not need to be dropping back behind the midfielders to win the ball. Because even if you do that, you come tackle the other player, you get the ball... There's no one in this area to pass the ball forward to. Uh, what we need to, to do is trust our teammates to do their jobs and focus on doing your own job correctly and being in a position to help out your teammates. So when the defensive midfielder or, or a defender wins the ball, then the forward needs to be in a play in place to uh, be open to receive a pass. And as I had mentioned before, there is often a pattern where games get stretched, there's no one in the middle of the field, there's a big gap between the midfielders and the defenders. And that will happen for our opponents as well. And that's something that the forward needs to take advantage of. If the other defenders are lined up in this area, uh, and there's a big gap, their other midfielders are here. Once we win the ball, our forward doesn't need to be in line standing next to a defender. He needs to take advantage of the fact that there's open space here. Both the attacking midfielder and the forward can take advantage of those open spaces to get the ball, have time to turn, look up, and find a pass. So I think this is a, a pretty good introduction to what needs to, um, what responsibilities the players have in these positions. Uh, again, this is something that we're going to focus on understanding the position so that later on we can think about how do we change things up, how do we, uh, how do we, uh, take advantage of the expectation that uh, the defender is going to stay home. As the kids get older, it's very important to have your outside defenders be able to overlap and provide width. And so understanding how that works out, understanding that that means when that that defender moves up that oftentimes a midfielder will drop back to take their their space to cover for them uh, those those are developments that will come on later uh, I think this will be a good foundation uh, for this season and moving forward and um, maybe later on I can do a separate video about what set pieces, corner kicks, goal kicks, maybe even throw-ins, what, what those look like, and we can, uh, we can take it from there. Thanks.